Howdy. In this video, we're going to go ahead and end 2D kinematics with the last type of problem. This is a pretty cool problem, at least I think so. Alright, so for number three, it says that a terrorist fires a cannon, <laughs> sorry, a terrorist fires a cannon at you uh, from a distance D away. <laughs> the bullet has an initial velocity of magnitude VB, and the cannon is pointed at an angle theta, as shown. You hope to intercept the bullet by firing a rocket at, it um, at the instant the cannon goes off. Your rocket starts at rest and is to be aimed at an angle phi. It is so powerful that it goes in a straight line. Um, its acceleration having a magnitude that increases with time according to C1t, always directed at the original angle phi. In other words, neglect gravity for the rocket obtain the equations that could be solved on a computer that determine the relationship between all variables in order to hit the bullet. These problems are going to be long-winded, so get ready for that. However, the strategy is still the same. What I want is I want the x of the rocket to equal the x of the bullet when the y of the rocket is equal to the y of the bullet. So that's all you need to do is set up your equations and just set the x the x positions equal to each other and the y positions equal to each other. Now, what makes this one kind of tricky is you need to set up your axes. In the previous problem, the axis was already set for you as well as all your positions and so forth. Here, there, you're just out in open space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set the origin right here. And so, let's make positive x go like this and positive y go like that. And so because this is the origin, at this point right here, we'll call this x equals zero. The cannon, which fires a bullet, <laughs> um, will be at x equals d because it's a distance d away. And now that I've set up my axis, make sure your math just reflects that. So what we need to do is we need to find the x and y components for the rocket, x and y components for the bullet, and then just set the x is equal to each other and the y is equal to each other. So let's go ahead and go at it. Let's talk about the rocket. First off, what's the acceleration in the x direction for the rocket? Well, it told me that the acceleration has a magnitude that increases in time according to C1t, but is directed at the original angle phi. And so your acceleration is C1t times cosine phi. It's going like this. Your x component is going to be adjacent, and your y component is going to be um, opposite, so we'll use sine. But as for the acceleration of the x, c1t cosine phi. Let's talk about the velocity in the x direction. How do I find velocity given acceleration? We know velocity is the integral of your acceleration, and we know that position will be the integral of velocity. Okay, uh, dx dt. Okay, so integrating this with respect to t, this is just going to be c1 t squared over 2 cosine phi. Remember, you're integrating the t. You're not integrating with respect to phi or c1. It's just a constant. Integrating that. And then plus my initial velocity, but it told me, if you can find the initial velocity, your rocket starts at rest. So my v of 0 is just 0, so there's no constant there. And then as for the x of the rocket, that's going to be the integral of your velocity. So that's going to be c1t cubed over 6 cosine phi. And then it started, the way I set up my axis is I set my axis to where it starts at the origin, and so then plus 0. So there's the x component of the rocket, but now we've got to do the y component. Ay. Ay, it's still going at c1t, but the y is going to be sine. Let's now find velocity. The velocity in the y direction is the integral of acceleration, c1t squared over 2, sine phi. And then, whoops, and then as for the initial velocity, once again, it started at rest. So we're good there. And then finally, the y of the rocket is going to be the integral of velocity, c1t cubed over 6, sine phi. Cool. Okay, so we got the rocket taken care of, but now we got to find the x and the y of the bullet. 
which I don't know why you fire a bullet out of a cannon. I don't think that would turn out too well. Okay, A in the X direction. Um, the acceleration, the X direction, it says that it fires at a distance D away. It's given an initial velocity, and you hope to intercept the bullet by the cannon goes off. But here's the thing, the bullet is just in regular free fall. Whenever that occurs, unless otherwise specified, whenever something is in free fall, your acceleration in the X is equal to zero. Now the acceleration in the Y will be negative G. So unless it's otherwise specified, like here they told you the acceleration is C1T, ignore gravity. That's what I did here. But if ever you're just something in free fall motion, acceleration in the X is always zero, acceleration in the Y is always negative G, so long as the positive Y axis is pointed up. Okay, so now let's do velocity in the X direction. It said that it had um, an initial velocity of VB. So there's VB. And there's my angle theta. And remember, all your equations need to match your axis. The initial velocity in the X direction is pointed in the negative X direction. According to my axis, the X component's in the negative direction, so this will be a negative VB, and then it's adjacent to that angle, so cosine theta, okay? And then finally, the X component of the bullet will be the integral of velocity, negative VB cosine theta times T, plus the initial position in the X direction, and it's initially starting here at X equals D. Okay, and so now that I've got the x component for that, let's do the y component. Vy, the integral of acceleration, is negative gt, and then plus the initial velocity in the y. Now notice the initial velocity in the y direction for the bullet, that's still positive. It's going up, so that's why the initial velocity in the y will be plus vb sine theta. But it was going to the left, and that's why this was negative. So it's very important that everything, all your math revolves around that axis. Finally, if I want the y position, the y of the bullet, this will be the integral of velocity, negative gt squared over 2 plus vb sine theta t, and then plus the initial position in the y, but it's initially starting at 0 for y equals 0, and so that's that. And that's it. Those are your equations. And now the last thing you need to do, what will get you full credit on this example, is you want the x of the rocket to equal the x of the bullet when the y of the rocket is equal to the y of the bullet. And so, the x of the rocket, c1t cubed over 6 cosine phi, needs to equal the x of the bullet, which is negative vb cosine theta times t plus d. And then, you set the y's equal to each other. So I want c1t cubed over 6 sine phi to equal the y of the bullet. Negative gt squared over 2 plus vb sine theta t. And then, you're done. Because it just said obtain the equations that could be solved. You know, that would have, have fun solving, uh, solving for that, but that wouldn't be too fun. But that's all that you're doing. So for kinematics, know how to take a derivative of an integral, know when to take a derivative of an integral, set up all your equations, then answer the question. As long as you attack kinematics, whether it's 1D or 2D like that, y'all are going to be more than okay on this part of the exam.